This is Joseph Mengele's son, making his, what else shall I say, first uh, American television appearance. Not surprisingly, Rolf Mengele is not enthusiastic about talking about his father in public. I was born in this situation to being in this uh, family. I learned by my mother that uh, my father uh, has no guilt. He just was a doctor there in the camp, helped the people. Then he had to flew away. Ich habe, ich habe auch heute noch, noch, bin auch heute noch der Meinung, dass die Aufgabe, die mein Mann damals hatte, eine reine positive Aufgabe war. Ich fühle mich absolut frei von Schuld. Ich sagte ja schon, man kann keine Geschichte zurückdrehen. Aber wenn ich könnte, wie ich wollte, Barfuß, ohne Schuhe, würde ich wieder zurückgehen. Es war so eine schöne Zeit. He is the last person you would expect to find at this place at this time. His name, Hurs, is forever associated with the most unspeakable cruelty that took place here. Rudolf Hurs was the commandant of Auschwitz the supposed family man who organized mass murder with ruthless efficiency. Today, Rainer Huss, here to one of the victims he has made it his lifetime's work to support, takes me to his grandfather's former house overlooking the killing factory. Yeah, it's a little bit scary for me. So everything was very, very close. Well, the crematoria, it's very close to the garden. Then you have here the, the buildings where the guards lived and where it was the office of my grandfather. He tells me how he's disowned his family. I have to do it. It's very, for me, it is very important. I'm the only one in the family who not denies the Holocaust, not deny the crimes my grandfather took place in, or that he creates such a horrible place at all. He's perplexed by old pictures of his grandfather relaxing with his children in the garden below. They come home and he was a so friendly uh, father and husband, so yeah. hugging his kids and all that stuff. How I, he could be a family man here yeah. and uh, do what he A mass did. murder on the other side. So and you've never worked that out? No. Welchen, was, was die sich hier gebaut haben, auf Kosten von anderen. Und die Trächtigkeit zu sagen, es gab's nicht. Wir waren immer, wir waren immer fair, wir waren immer gut. Wir haben das nicht gemacht, die anderen. Ich habe keinen Kontakt mit any Aunts, Cousins. Die only, the only person in my life, which I have contact, is my own mom. She lives close to me. I talk about her. She is in, in a nursing home. But the rest, they deny the Holocaust. They, are, they still are savable somehow? They can be saved? No, they are too ignorant. And my aunt made an interview with Thomas Harding. And I was with him here 2009 for research. And he asked her and said, 
some question and she said, how could it be that so many people survive when my father killed all of them? That's not true. That's a lie. Nobody gets killed at Auschwitz. It was a prison. And this lady is over 80 years old. Nazi war criminal Hermann Göring, a member of Hitler's inner circle and a leading architect of the extermination of the Jews. This is Bettina. Göring was her great uncle. Bettina Göring remembers her grandmother denying that there had been any wrongdoing by the family at all. I was like 11, 12, something like that. We saw a documentary about the Holocaust on TV and she was there and she'd say, it's all lies, it's all lies. And we went like, how can you say that? I mean, look at all that, what happened. So I remember that there was a big fighting already yeah, at home. So yeah, I mean, that's, that's how those people dealt with it. If they would have uh, admitted what happened, I mean, it would have been terrible. So best way to go is say it didn't happen at all. Hans Frank was another of Hitler's closest associates. As Governor-General of Occupied Poland, he was responsible for the ghettos and the death camps. This is his son, Niklas. Verbrecher Oder es gibt meinen Weg, den ich zusammen mit meinem Bruder Norman gegangen bin, anzuerkennen, ja, dieser, unser Vater war ein Krimineller. Und da gab es das allerälteste Kind, der fünf Frankkinder, die wanderte mit ihrem Mann nach Südafrika aus, weil damals dort die Apartheid ihr sehr gefiel. Und äh, mein letztes Telefongespräch mit ihr verlief so, dass ich sagte, na, Sigrid, was macht ihr denn gerade? Dann sagt sie am Telefon, du, wir rechnen gerade aus, wie lange jeder Jude hat brennen können, wenn wirklich sechs Millionen Juden verbrannt worden sind in den Gasöfen. Nämlich nur 1,6 Sekunden. Also alles Lüge, alles Lüge. <lacht> 